to the, this morning session. So, Teshwan is going to teach us how to bootstrap lattice game music. Okay, shall I start? Okay. Uh, it's my great honor to present my collaborative work with my PhD supervisor, Vladimir Kazakov, who is a real expert on the matrix model and interoperability and teaches me a lot in our project. So, in this talk, we will go through uh, three models and uh, try to solve these three models using the uh, method I would like to call it uh, bootstrap by equation of motion. Uh, so first the two models, although it seems uh, very simple and, uh, well, the second model is not already not very simple, but uh, I, I think it already captures like 90% uh, of the construction of how to bootstrap the lattice Young Mio theory. So we will go, uh, go, go through this model step by step. The first one, of course, is uh, extremely simple. It's a single variable integration, or if you like, uh, if you like, it is a zero dimensional FIFO theory, if you like to call it. And uh, our motivation for this, uh, I would like to call it bootstrap uh, by equation of motion, is that uh, first we want to uh, give some other, uh, some choice other than first uh, the perturbation theory and other numerical method like Monte Carlo. And uh, our method contains, uh, always contains, almost always contains four <coughs> important elements. First is observable, the second is equation of motion, the third one is the symmetry, and the last one is positivity condition. Uh, there is one more condition compared to our conventional conformal bootstrap or S matrix bootstrap. That is, uh, in, in such case, we, uh, most of the time, we are not imposing or we don't even know the exact Lagrange. Okay. So, let's start with our first model. Let's look at the observable. What is the observable? In this model, the observable is uh, surprisingly simple. It's WK. So case moment. Right? And this is uh, this series of uh, moments. This is what we want to bootstrap and get their precise value. We know that uh, we have the normalization. W zero is one. And uh, we also notice this uh, equation of motion. In this case, this is just a schwinger dyson equation. We just uh, do the shift. Sorry. X to the x plus epsilon. What we what will we get? Uh, we do a shift and uh, we find uh, such an equation. And we, if we write it uh, in terms of WK, we will get uh, Recursion relation. That is, uh, we can solve the always solve the higher moments in terms of the lower moments. And what we have, we have the symmetry. So the symmetry is uh, surprisingly simple, C two symmetry, which tells us that uh, W K equals zero for K O. Okay. So by these three, uh, by these uh, two conditions. We are killing all the old moments, and we only uh, live with uh, even moments. And we can solve all the higher moments in terms of W2, because notice that W0 is 1. So W2 is effectively the only variable remaining. And uh, all the higher moments, they are linear function in terms of W2. But we cannot solve W2 at this moment. What can, I, what can we do? Well, we, uh, since we are doing bootstrap, there must be some uh, positivity condition. So what's the positivity condition? It's also 
surprisingly simple. What, what does this mean? This means that any square of the polynomial in terms of x integrated over the this matter is a positive. This is, of course, a positive matter integrating against a positive function, it is positive. But we know that this must be true for any alpha, any real vector alpha. So this will give us a very non-trivial condition. How to say it? Well, we simply observe that this is a bilinear form in terms of the real vector alpha. Right? The matrix is a matrix of the moments. We can write it uh, uh, clearly. What is M? M is a, actually an inner product matrix, where the inner product is defined by taking the correlator. Let's see. 1, x, x squared, x cubed. Uh, I neglect some uh, something. You can you can write down it uh, very easily. This is a uh, you know, form called the Hankel matrix, actually. And we notice that this matrix is positive in definite. Why? Because this is just by definition. For any alpha, this is positive. So this is positive in definite. So we are actually finished. We can do the bootstrap. We notice that in this matrix, all the matrix elements, they are the linear functions of uh, W2. Or effectively, W2 is the only thing remaining in this inequality. So we can do the very simple bootstrap. We can minimize or maximize W2 such that under the constraint that uh, equation of motion and uh, positivity, uh, sorry, symmetry and uh, positivity. Uh, forgive me using the positivity terminology a lot of time because I know currently no one wants to be positive. And we can we can take the truncation of this matrix. How to do it? M lambda positive semi definite. And the lambda is uh, we are taking the cos lambda plus one times lambda plus one matrix. We do a numerical truncation. What's the result? For example, when g equals 1 and uh, lambda equals 10, we have uh, Okay, this is a 5.5 digits result. This is our bootstrap lower bound, and this is our bootstrap upper bound. This is the exact result calculated from the closed form expression. Luckily, for this extremely simple model, we have the closed form solution. So, let's finish the bootstrap of this model. Yeah, uh, here I have some remarks. The first one regarding the perturbation theory. Clearly, here, we, we are much better than the perturbation theory. If you really take g equals 1 and do the perturbation, you know that uh, for this specific model, the perturbation theory it doesn't convert. You can't get uh, more precision by taking more perturbation terms. Actually, if you really do it, it gives you nothing. Basically nothing. It doesn't even give you the correct side. Uh, sorry, I don't agree with you. But I think we can expand over uh, expansion in 1 over g. Yeah, you first uh, solve uh, uh, g into the quotient uh, term of x, uh, then the quadratic term is something uh, proportional to 1 over uh, square root g, then you expand it in 1 over square root g. 
um, let me try it later. What I what I have done is I expand in terms of uh, uh, in terms of, of G instead of one over G. So that's why it got uh, very bad result. Maybe uh, if you expand uh, in terms of one over G, you, you get better result. Sorry, just to be exactly right, but the, 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 the sum over G here is you can easily see that it's a border the summable. Uh, yes, yes, the indeed, field. you can so, do it. And of course you can go analytically. Yeah, and, and yeah, yeah indeed, you can do it. I, I have I've already done it, actually. Okay. I, I tried it. But uh, this, uh, I mean. this asks uh, you for... Uh, uh, this asks you to solve the perturbation theory to arbitrary order, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah this is not uh, general to other models. No, both not general. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes. So this remarkable convergence of maximum and minimum does it happen only for G equal one or in here? No, I will show a picture later by slides for any G. Yeah. And uh, the second, uh, any other question? Yes. Have you tried like the whole world? Uh, for this uh, for this specific model, yeah. I will talk about it later. Okay. Okay. The second one is uh, justification. All convergence. Uh, this is the most urgent thing. Why does this method work? Why it, what, we, are, we are just assuming some uh, seemingly very trivial uh, inequalities. Why does it give us a uh, very non-trivial result? Or does this upper bound and lower bound they will finally converge to the exact result? Well, for this model, this is a bit tricky. But uh, we, have, uh, we have proved the convergence for some other models. That's uh, actually uh, quartic one matrix model. In that case, uh, we, it is very, very similar to this case. And we can prove that uh, actually the upper bound and the lower bound actually converge. Let me summarize the main point of that proof. The main point is, well, um, suppose you want to use Mathematica to do some integration. So you must tell Mathematica first what's your integrated function and then where you are doing the integration. Basically, the equation of motion tells you what function you are doing the integration. And the positivity condition tells you where you are doing the integration by the result uh, called the hamburger moment problem. Actually, this Hankel matrix uh, tells you that you are doing the integration on the real line instead of on the maybe unique circle on the complex plane or some other weird uh, integration line. But uh, how, uh, to generalize that uh, proof to this case, it is a bit tricky. It is a bit subtle. I didn't try it hard. Maybe it is still possible. I, this is just not finished. Okay. The third one is uh, uniqueness. But but do you have do you know how fast does it converge with the truncation one? Uh, um, you have an idea? I tried it uh, numerically. It must be exponentially converged. But uh, we, we don't have a rigorous uh, analysis for it yet. Uniqueness and uh, generalization. Uh, for this point, I want to say that uh, this similar no logic can be easily gener generated uh, to integrating over several variables, as long as it is finite number of variables. Uh, for example, I have to do the same story for two variable integration or 2.54 theory, if you like. And uh, you will always get the unique solution by this method. This is what I, what I think will happen for a finite number of integration. But for infinite number of integrations, where this is an uh, uh, interesting physics happen, uh, this might not be true. Uh, when there is a uh, symmetry breaking happen, actually. So this is what I'm going to say, symmetry. <laughs> Here we assume that uh, the, all the case, uh, all the moment, they are vanishing. But uh, actually, this uh, this 
we know that this condition is independent of this equation of motion. You can't derive the cis symmetry condition by the equation of motion. And it seems they are independent. So what if we don't assume this condition? And we, we continue to do the bootstrap. Well, the, uh, the, the result is we are left with two variables, W1 and W2. We can bootstrap both of them. So I, I simply here put the result of uh, bootstrapping the W1 on the same setting, under the same setting, W1 smaller than. So this is a rigorous bound for W1. So actually, even if we don't assume the global symmetry, we can, we can reconstruct it by the bootstrap. And, but this makes, uh, uh, assuming this uh, global condition, if we are very sure about it, then it uh, increases our uh, efficiency of algorithm. How to say it? Well, the first way to say it is uh, by the symmetry, we have less variable. And there is another secret one, or not, not that secret, is uh, it will make the matrix block diagonal. Let me try to... Uh, I have a question. Uh, yes. If you consider the odd k for, for w, you don't have the condition w0 equals 1. So isn't it now in terms of 2? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> then you would need to put uh, k equals minus 1, right? The first one, the leading one. Yeah. Yeah, so this is... Uh, Actually, it is W1 plus G W3 equals zero. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, let me write down the block diagonal form. This will be useful for our next model. We simply put uh, 1 x squared x to the fourth x x cubed. For example, this is uh, 1, W2, W8. Uh, sorry. So, this is 0. 0. And this is uh, uh, W2. W4. Sorry. And uh, there is uh, another matrix uh, corresponds to the old moment. This is the even moment. And this, uh, sorry. This is the even operator. This is the old operator. And this is 0. This is block diagonal. So, both, this is equivalent to the both block they are block diagonal. So this makes the uh, uh, algorithm much, much easier. Actually, this is very trivial. This is uh, the global symmetry is just D2. Suppose you have a very involved uh, global symmetry, like uh, when we are dealing with lattice uh, young youth, we have uh, um, several hundred order of uh, uh, lattice space group then we, have, we can greatly simplify this problem. OK, uh, this finished the uh, discussion of the first model. Uh, if there are any questions? What if I uh, add the term with uh, sixth power, fifth power, continue increasing power? Yes. Uh, would the method still work? Uh, I think it will work. Why? Because uh, I tried it for two variable integration. Two variable integration, you can always integrate it out of one variable and get another variable. So I think in that more complicated case, it will work. Then, of course, uh, if you add more powers, it will continue working. As long as your equation of motion contains finite number of uh, quantities, it is totally fine. Actually. But if it's a, a sign of x, for example, the potential, can you do something? Oh, sorry? If it's a sine of x, the potential, for example. Sine of x? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sine of x, uh, it is more tricky. Then your moments should be some cosine of x, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, anyway, you, may make, you, you want to make it uh, finite. But the basis is still power of x, the basis you use for the moment. Yeah, you need to choose some other basis. I see. Yeah. It is more tricky. Is, is it clear that I can always find the base or my like No, I, I don't know. I, I didn't. Uh, I, d I didn't try it. Okay. Yeah, it must be some mathematical theory. Okay.
Okay, due to this, uh, the method will, most of the uh, part, it will be parallel to the first part. So I will stress on what's different for the third and the uh, second and the third mode. Okay, again, for the third, uh, second model, it is a two matrix model in the larger n unit. It, I noticed that uh, this is a Hermitian matrix, not a real matrix. And uh, the potential is of this form. This is a, a commutator of A and B. They are, sorry, I missed something. This is trace, of course. And uh, we have all the, all the uh, properties for large matrices like uh, large factorization, etc. Okay, what's the observable? Here, due to that, uh, the matrix is not uh, like a variable. They don't uh, commute with, with each other. So our observable is some uh, uh, trace over words in terms of A and B. They don't commute. But uh, they are equivalent. Sorry. Let's to put it more serious. But uh, they are equivalent to up to cyclicity because there is a trace. And uh, the equation of motion uh, still similar to the first one. Constructed by A and B, we can get. Uh, we we see that we can get uh, a lot of uh, equation of motions, but uh, unluckily they are not uh, as much as variables. And there is another thing that uh, these equations, due to the larger factorization, if you take the derivative uh, against uh, the words, you will get some double trace operator. And double trace operator they will factorize into a. Uh, Product of a single trace operator. So this, this so is you are talking about the large factorization because you are interested to sum uh, to only to the to the infinite terminal limit. Sorry. So you are going to be interested only to the large limit of this. Uh, yes. Yes. We are interested only in the large limit. Okay. Yes. So uh, as we as we know that uh, the nonlinear equations they are non-convex conditions. And the uh, non-convex condition will give us a non-convex optimization problem. This will be uh, terribly hard to solve. So we must uh, do something. Uh, the most uh, conventional method in our community is uh, scale over some variables so to make it uh, linear. And then we use some navigators to find the, uh, the solution. But here we, we have better choice. I will talk about it later. The symmetry. Okay, let's talk about the symmetry of uh, this model. We assume that all the symmetries they are not break. They don't break. But uh, since here this is in large n limit, it has an infinite degree of freedom. Sometimes it will break. We need to keep this in mind. But uh, here uh, we just uh, abuse all the global symmetry and uh, we just assume all of them. What is D4? D4 is a dehydral group generated by A to the minus A, B to the minus B, and A to the B, interchange of A and B. This is a dehydral group. And Z2, it is actually the discrete charge conjugation, A to the AP, A to the A transpose, and B to the B transpose. We, we will assume here, this group acting on any word, 
it will give the same result for any g. Okay, this is a symmetry condition. And what's the positivity condition? Positivity condition will be the integral product between the words in terms of A and B. Let's write down its uh, This step means ah, the PA. Ah, thank you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> this is positive symmetry. And due to we have a global symmetry, this global symmetry has uh, 10 erupts. And we notice that uh, the words here uh, deform some multiplet under this uh, global symmetry. So we can do some linear combination to make them into the irreducible representation to make this big matrix block diagonal. Actually, there are 10 blocks for each representation. This is uh, easy to understand because like in the conformable strap uh, for each spin channel, we have, uh, we have uh, independent uh, positivity condition. And uh, well, if you like, you can call this discrete spin. OK. Finally, we need to face this uh, uh, non-linearity here. This is uh, actually there are the double trace op operator or the quadratic uh, terms in the uh, equation of motion. So how do how do we do it? Well, naively, relaxation. Naively, we can introduce some variable just to denote the. Uh, the quadratic terms. So this is a symmetric matrix. W is a vector of uh, observables. So we we introduce a symmetric matrix just to denote this uh, this uh, quadratic terms. And uh, in in our equation of motion, we replace all the quadratic terms by this uh, 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 the terms of uh, the elements of this matrix. And this is not uh, so the equation of motion becomes linear, but uh, this equation is not linear. It's apparent. So how do we do it? Well, we replace it uh, with Q larger than WWT. This is, uh, this is uh, positive. What is W? Uh, w is a vector of all the moments, like uh, this long vector, trace A, trace A square, any moment. All the observables. So WWT is a matrix of all the quadratic terms constructed by the moments. Sorry, in describing the connection with a single matrix case, we constrain the positivity constraint you had was linear in W, and now it's quadratic in W. Uh, uh, in a single matrix case, W was a vector of moments. But the positivity constraint you had was, was something like alpha w alpha. I guess. It was linear in w. Yes, the positivity condition is linear in w. But the equation of motion due to the larger factorization, it is not linear. And that's why we need some relaxation to make it, it max. Okay. So if you were to use larger factorization and just keep the double traces and multiple traces, you would have a linear equation, but then there's too many variables. Uh, yes, yes. So uh, somehow this is, uh, but uh, due to the margin factorization, you can identify some different uh, uh, double trace operators, right? Maybe you write schematically how the equation would work, because many equations are related to this nonlinearity. Uh, so but it's up to you. Yeah, it, it will be long. If uh, later I can I can show it by slides, I think. Yeah, if you if you want to look at it. 
because it's uh, very long. Okay, uh, we can do the relaxation, and this is uh, uh, this is the convex condition, and we can even write it in nicer form by short complement. This is totally linear and uh, in, in a FTP form. We call it a relaxation matrix. So what we are doing? Well, basically we are forgetting that uh, the, in the equation of motion, the quadratic term, they are the product of the original observables. observables. But uh, they subject uh, to the, this new condition. This, this is what we are doing. Well, by this way, of course, we lose some information. So we hope that uh, we don't lose too much, such that the algorithm doesn't convert. But it seems we are lucky enough. Okay. Here we have uh, transformed all the things into a FTP element. <coughs> we can do the bootstrap. We can minimize or maximize. or any linear combinations of the observables under the constraint of the equation of motion and uh, positivity and uh, relaxation matrix. This is a well post uh, um, SDP problem, and we can solve it. What's the result? Sorry, let, let me ask one question. So the constraints that you are getting from equilibrium motion are uh, not only in linear, it also has it has both linear and nonlinear ones, right? Uh, yeah, the nonlinear one we replace it with uh, okay. a new variable. And the linear one you use them to reduce the number of. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Things. The nonlinear one, after I do this replacement, I can also use it to, re to reduce the free variable. Yes. Yes. So what is Q? Is it variable? Sorry? What is Q? Q is a matrix of uh, variables, it's a symmetric matrix. Or if you like, you just understand it by that uh, we replace all the quadratic terms in the equation of motion by some new variable. Okay, okay. So for, for each linear term, you introduce a new variable. Okay, B is a new variable. Uh, yes. When G equals H equals 1, I remind you that G and H, they are the parameter here. And uh, if we put the lambda equals 11, that means we are bootstrapping all the, all, uh, all, the, all the observables with length less than 22. It's super long already. So what's the result? The result uh, we get is uh, So we have uh, six digits. This is already very precise. Several remarks. Sorry, it, what is T2? Mm. Sorry? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I will forget. T2 is uh, the trace A square. Expectation. But yes. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, do you have any input dates and the size of the matrix? Sorry? Do you have any input the size of the matrix? No, no, no. no. It, it is in the strict uh, larger limit. So okay. there is no n up here if you normalize everything correctly. Okay. Sorry, uh, the question is that if you don't use the equation of motion, you don't get bound or you just get a much weaker bound? Oh, well, you don't get bound. I don't think. Yeah, I, I, or you, you will get uh, just trivial bound, like a T2 that larger than zero or something like that. Are, the, are these reverse bounds, or because of relaxation, is these are, these are, you are maximizing T2 or minimizing T2? Uh, yeah, by maximizing T2, you get the upper bound by minimizing but, T2. Uh, but you already use the relaxation. That's, yes. Uh, that, that means these are reverse bound, or, or? Yeah, relaxation, this, well, this, you can get this. This is just relaxation, not uh, approximation. Like, uh, if you know that uh, x uh, equals 1, then x must be larger or equals to 1. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
error remarks. <coughs> First, in this model, we got uh, there is very clear evidence that uh, we are much better than Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo, there is some uh, written paper by Ragat. <coughs> Uh, in 2021, uh, it takes uh, 80 hours to do the simulation and uh, in the under n equals 800. Because Monte Carlo, you can never work in the strict large n limit. And uh, if you will get uh, 4.5 digits. But for bootstrap, with all these settings, well, for the old result, it takes uh, like uh, 40 hours to get 6 digits. But uh, that result is without uh, the symmetry reduction. So I think if you, re if you use uh, symmetry reduction as well as using the mosaic solver, it should be less than one hour. I promise that. Uh, I think <laughs> it, should, it must be less than one hour. So push that. Less than one hour. <laughs> but uh, less than 40 hours, this is still much better than Monte Carlo. This is very clear. 1.5 digit is a lot. The second one is... Can I ask a question about yes. this again? So this, if you wanted to do instead n equal 800 or n equal 6 or 8, then you would have all the double traces, so you could still do this. Right? Oh, sorry? You could still use your method also at n finite, I guess. Uh, yes, but yes, indeed, the indeed. Traces are there. indeed. I will talk about it uh, later. Okay. Finite, uh, uh, infinite n uh, is, uh, is, uh, is not necessary. Because uh, when I was discussing the single variable integral, uh, I think that this method works in any finite uh, degree of freedom. As, as long as it has finite degree of freedom, it is totally fine. And the finite n is just a finite degree of freedom. But do you know then how it compares to Monte Carlo? Uh, no, I didn't do that. Because in this model, I mean, if you put on the lattice, then it is a bit more interesting. Like. Uh, on each lattice side, you have some uh, uh, three times three matrix. But uh, if you just uh, do the finite uh, integration, this is mathematically trivial. The second one is the number of uh, equation of motion. Unlike the first, uh, first model, the first model, we almost have the exact number of, uh, number of equation and the number of variable. So all the higher moments, uh, they can be solved by W2. But in this case, number of equation of motion is smaller than number of variables. That means uh, you, you are introducing more equation of motion and you are getting more uh, number of variables. They are, more, uh, they are always more than the number of equations. But by introducing more variables, you get uh, more positivity condition. This seems uh, this is worth it. And the third one is equation of motion. It is linearly dependent. So, uh, like if you have uh, 10,000 equation of motion, but uh, like uh, uh, only 7,000 7, they are linearly independent, and uh, the remaining ones they are redundant. This uh, redundancy, this is technically hard to remove, actually. The first, the last one. But does it make your numeric unstable to have this redundancy? Well, uh, my method is using some uh, exact uh, exact number, uh, every, uh, sorry, arithmetic in mathematical. So I'm mean, always using some uh, regional function, uh, sorry, regional numbers. So there will be no, no such thing. Otherwise, <coughs> you need to use some arbitrary precision arithmetic to reduce this uh, instability. Okay, the last one is, uh, in, our, in this problem, the trace O is a real number, actually. This is non-trivial. This is a result of uh, this charge conjugation symmetry. So by assuming all the variables here are real, actually we are assuming some uh, global symmetry. We assume that it better not uh, break. But it, uh, if it breaks, then we need to solve some uh, complex uh, semi-definite programming, which is uh, uh, twice more involved. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. How many independent equation of motions in, like, are there in your example for lambda is only one? Uh, sorry? How many 
independent equation of motions are there? Uh, I think um, I think seventy uh, k something like that. Seventy k. Yes. How many independent? Yeah. Yeah, independent. It will be like seventy uh, percent of the. Okay. Yeah. So this is one. this is my rough re memory. I don't remember it very clear. But uh, up to the order of mag magnitude, I hope I'm more correct. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Similar number of variables. Yeah. In this case, indeed, if you increase the uh, bootstrap cutoff, you get more and more free variables up to the equation of motion. But uh, they are still similar. Like uh, there is only sometimes there are one thousand uh, variables, but with uh, uh, 70k equation of motion. Yeah. So it uh, reduces a lot. Sorry. Yes. For your relaxation, did you check that it didn't matter again? Because it's easy to check if it is. Yes, it matters. Uh, by the relaxation, we are imposing that uh, all the, all the <coughs> eigenvalues of uh, this matrix is uh, positive. So if there is uh, zero eigenvalues, then it matters, right? Yes. Yes, actually it happens. It uh, is uh, somehow saturated, but not fully saturated. So I was just referring to the equation above. Forget about the matrix. Is Q equal to W W transpose? Uh, uh, depends on for some lower moment. Uh, sometimes I get the exact uh, equivalent uh, equal, but uh, but for higher moment it is not. So uh, basically this. Uh, Factorization is uh, secretly, uh, secretly hidden in the linear part of the equation of motion. But it, you, you could try to see where it, because now you're very close to some optimal. Uh, yes, yes, I can. Yeah, the transpose uh, are very close to each other, and so now you can try the yes. this method for sort of stepping uh, yeah. so that you impose also that additional constraint and see if it bounces. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, as you increase the uh, bootstrap cutoff, so this condition is reconstructed after, just by the bootstrap. Okay, any other questions? This finish. Okay. Is, is it known that if this model has some symmetry broken phase and ca can you get uh, yes. the signal of it in the bootstrap, it starts failing like... Uh, yes, uh, but it, uh, it won't uh, fail, it won't fail. But uh, for example, there is a Z2 symmetry breaking that uh, this symmetry breaks. So what does this mean? This means that uh, the tree A could be non-zero, right? So if you bootstrap it, uh, instead of getting the tree A smaller than some uh, like uh, 10 to the minus 6, uh, you will get the tree A smaller than 1, or something like that. So you can fix the tree A and scan over it mm -hmm. to get uh, different bounds. This is how we study the symmetry breaking using the bootstrap method, but I want to cover it here. One more question about the relaxation. So is the relaxation the only place where I'm going infinity anchors? Like if I, sorry, not the relaxation, but the equality. Um, yes, I think so. So then the relaxation allows for finite and theory inside the bound? Yeah, in the finite end, this, this will be some uh, positivity uh, conditions on double trace operator. So, oh, okay. So yes. then. Uh, is, it is exactly the positivity condition on double trace operator. So then in between the two bounds, there are also finite end theories. Um, not really. I don't think so. Because here, by the larger factorization, uh, this, this kind of operator, it must be zero in larger limit because it factorizes. Right, if you assume the global symmetry, but for finite n, this is a, a Z2 or Z2 even operator, so it cannot vanish. So this is not uh, that uh, trivial. Right. Okay. So finally, we reach the large n Yamil theory. As we have just discussed, uh, this is not limited to large n. Uh, finite n can only be singular. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, for Monte Carlo, finite n is much, much more simpler. But for bootstrap, uh, we are not sure whether it's uh, that simpler. <laughs> okay. Okay, 
observable. It is a Wilson loop average. Is uh, any this kind of stuff? This is an example of Wilson loop. Here, our main target of bootstrap is uh, one plus at average. And uh, the equation of motion. This is a uh, Marquinko Migdal. Loop equation. Uh, I, I don't have time to uh, post uh, specific derivation of uh, this equation, but uh, I can simply, uh, sim simply note that uh, this equation, yeah, just a Schwinger Dyson equation, if you do the this shift. And then you carefully take care of uh, all the open indices to make it a uh, closed Wilson loop. Then you get the Markinko Mishdao loop equation. And it is nonlinear due to the large impact polarization. Uh, here I give an example because uh, I don't uh, derive this equation. For example, we do uh, the simplest one in 2D. Well, this model is uh, 2D, 3D, 4D, any dimension you can define. If you do the variation here, and then you get a uh, loop equation, how it will look like. Well, it is uh, just uh, this one. Um, plus one, one over two lambda. Uh, the order doesn't matter. So it rotate uh, left or rotate right due to the charge conjugation symmetry. You will get the uh, same result. So I don't uh, mark the error here. And this is linear. When, when does it? When does the nonlinearity happen? Well, suppose you have a Wilson loop uh, looks like this one. Here is uh, overlapping path, and then you do the variation here. Then it will factorize into product of two loops. And also, this is, uh, this is for the inverse direction. When it is the same direction, something like uh, this, right? it will factorize to into this shape. OK. So this is how the loop equation looks like. And we have the global symmetry. The global symmetry, it will be uh, the discrete uh, space group or discrete point group. Time, uh, direct product, uh, the charge con conjugation symmetry. So this is the discrete uh, spin or discrete version of uh, OD. D is a space-time dimension and uh, times uh, charge conjugation, it is a uh, two. Charge conjugation, you can, you can understand it as uh, choosing different uh, orientation of the wheels and loop, and you get the same result. So the loop is in the fundamental representation? Uh, yeah. Loop in the fundamental? No, loop is, uh, loop itself the is uh, no, singlet, uh, singlet. Okay. Uh, that means this wheels and loop, uh, if you rotate it uh, this way, it is the same one. No, so I mean, the trace, if it is in the joint, you will have some center symmetry also. If it is in the fundamental center symmetry, it will be broken, the global symmetry. Uh, yeah, but it is a singlet. All the wheels and loop, uh, after you take a... Uh, no, no, the variable inside trace, uh, the question is whether it's in fundamental or in 
Uh, uh, it depends. Sometimes it is not. There is some stabilizer, stabilizer. Will look. Sometimes it is. Sometimes this is up to you. No? This is a, the Wilson loop. You can see as a dynamical quark. Uh, sorry, a non dynamical quark. You are, you are proving the theory with some non dynamical quark. The representation is up to you. No, no, you I came from the equation that's closed on fundamental. Fundamental, okay. That's okay. Fundamental. And by this uh, discrete symmetry, of course, uh, later we can use it uh, to block the diagonal as a matrix and the positivity. Uh, we mentioned earlier that uh, the positivity condition depends on the, on the space you are doing the integration. So the space here, it is uh, on each lattice, you have a SU infinity matrix. So the space is much more involved. It is not very surprising that we got uh, more positivity condition. So the first positivity condition is the old one. We take the complex conjugation and it is zero. And the second one is the reflection positivity. Let me uh, explain it uh, one by one. For the first one, uh, here the complex conjugation is just uh, you if you take a if you take a Wilson path starting from one point and end with other point, the complex conjugation just reverses it to this. So what does this mean? Let, let's uh, draw a simplest uh, positivity matrix. Uh, let's start with. Uh, it's two points. This is P1 and P2, right? So how, how do we construct the positivity matrix? Well, there is P1, P2, P1 delta, P2 delta. This is one, this is one. Why? Because uh, you, you take the product of uh, the reverse of itself, you will get one. And this is the UP, the one plug head and the one plug head. This is positive semi-definite. So you will get uh, up smaller than one, a rigorous condition, <coughs> although trivial. But uh, it will become non-trivial if you consider higher uh, cutoff. So, so this is, uh, uh, how to say, interpreting over positive function equality. And the reflection positivity, there are three kinds. That is, uh, if you take a reflection plane, and then this is positive. What more? You take the reflection line between the, on the link between the sides, it is also positive. And you have the diagonal. This is positive. So for, the, uh, for each of these uh, positivity conditions, it can be generalized uh, to some matrices. And uh, when you are doing the symmetry reduction, uh, because you take a reflection plane, you break the symmetry. So you, have, you, you are taking the symmetry reduction with respect to the subgroup uh, that uh, stabilizes the reflection plane after. So for the reflection matrix, you have uh, less uh, symmetry. This is a uh, signal. OK. So uh, furthermore, we have the relaxation. We also use the relaxation too. And uh, then we gather all the stuff, and uh, we can do the book graph. And uh, we, uh, I will show the result here. That's nice. Mm. The blue button? Uh. The blue button on the top left. Okay. Yeah. First, let me show some. Uh, 
this is the uh, first uh, some old result in 2007 by Anderson and Kruczynski. They are bootstrapping the UP, the one black hat average. And uh, they are the plot uh, under different uh, bootstrap uh, cutoff. The red dot is the Monte Carlo result. And uh, the black line, it is uh, perturbation, strong coupling and weak coupling perturbation. OK, but uh, at that stage, uh, the uh, they, are, they, are, uh, they are doing the numerics up to a very limited cutoff, and they are not using the symmetry, uh, symmetry reduction or the positivity, reflection positivity condition. So here, this is, the, this is the improved result by us. So uh, the blue line, orange line, and the yellow line, they are the bootstrap result under different cutoff. The red dot or the purple dot here, this is the Monte Carlo result, recent Monte Carlo result. And uh, the black dashed line, they are the strong and weak coupling extension, perturbative result. I mean. So this means that uh, uh, let's look at the 4D. Uh, uh, actually, we, we also have 2D results, but 2D, as is well known, it is a solvable model by some, I think, uh, growth and weight. And what do you have to solve it uh, exactly? So it is an exact uh, solvable model. But uh, for 3D and 4D, it is totally non trivial. And uh, in 4D, we notice that uh, this is a first order phase transition here. Uh, and uh, what is physically important is uh, the weak coupling that is on this side. Because the uh, strong coupling side, it doesn't flow to the actual continuum QCD. So, uh, we see that uh, the bootstrap result, uh, the upper bound is uh, fairly close to the uh, Monte Carlo result. If uh, only, only be weaker when we are close to the phase transition. And uh, it uh, closely follows the uh, perturbation line. So I expect that uh, this uh, current uh, cutoff is LMAP equals 16, that is uh, the longest uh, Wilson loop we are considering is uh, of 16 length. So I expect a much better result uh, at uh, maybe L equals uh, 20 or 24. Sorry, in your bootstrap, your lattice size is, uh, is infinite or is Yes, it's infinite. But uh, for Monte Carlo, they always put some finite N and uh, finite uh, volume. So Monte Carlo, you have some systematic error function. Okay, some remarks. Uh, here we are actually better than Monte Carlo in a very weak coupling. Let me, yeah, in the very weak side, like uh, lambda smaller than 0 0.5, actually this is uh, actually better than Monte Carlo for it. But uh, close to the phase transition, it is not. Why is the lower bound? <coughs> yeah, this is a uh, very conventional uh, it, this is uh, very. Uh, this ha happens a lot in this kind of uh, bootstrap by equation of motion. It sometimes uh, there are two phases. In this phase, actually, if you go far from the phase transition point, you will find that the upper bound and lower bound they are almost equally close to the exact result. But uh, in the other phase, it seems uh, only by maximizing the black hat average, you got the physical result. The lower bound, well, it is a rigorous bound, but it is not even physical. It is very far from physical, and uh, there might be some numerical instability happening. But do you think it would converge? As uh, yes, I think it, it will converge, because the same thing happened in the two matrix model. Uh, no, already in one matrix model, large and one matrix model, and we proved that uh, it will converge, although it converge very slowly. And uh, this is uh, very much perfectible. We are running it uh, most of the time just on a single CPU core. We can expect uh, much better performance for uh, when we are running it on cluster. Uh, and we can get uh, better results at L equals 24. And the set, uh, third point is uh, this is not limited to large end. We can actually do finite end with that. And uh, what's more, we can get uh, estimation not only for UP, the plug head average, but also the higher Wilson up to a cutoff. And the, for the solver, we are using MOSFET. It is a 20-hour CPU time for a single point. 
But uh, recently, Motec, uh, they have some new publishment uh, that uh, makes it uh, mu much more efficient. So it uh, right now takes uh, two hours. <laughs> yeah, because the previous version it is not parallelized uh, due to unknown reasons. But right now it is parallelized. <laughs> okay, the final remark is uh, we are not really far from the real physics here. Uh, for the other part, this is a two matrix model plot. Uh, T2 is uh, trace, uh, trace A square, T4 is uh, trace A to the fourth, the second model. And we will get an uh, airline that is shrinking to the exact result. This is a T2 model. And uh, so the toy model, this is the analytical result. We are, you, when you are increasing lambda, you will see that it is always shrinking. Actually, for lambda it's a 5, it will be indistinguishable from the black dashed line. OK. This concludes my discussion. You, you said you were using symmetry to to, to, to make a block diagonal to make the, yes the symmetry you mean the lattice symmetry uh, yes yes like uh, the discrete version of rotation symmetry or discrete version of con charge conjugation symmetry of course the charge conjugation is already discrete <laughs> I have some comment yes you probably didn't do due to the lack of time uh, uh, about the uh, the boundary conditions for uh, mechanical Migdal equations. After all, those are equations, some uh, finite difference equations, you need uh, to inject there some boundary condition. Of course, for very large groups you have confinement, but it's a very vague uh, statement of complicated groups. But for small loops, the only thing you have is the, uh, uh, the so-called backtracking condition, the fact that if, for example, the contour, the Wilson loop repeats itself, it will, it will be one. Yes? Or if you put uh, some path out of the loop and replace it back with the same path, it will be equal to the same loop. This is more or less the condition which is equivalent to unitarity of the variable, for, of the underlying variables. And actually, the positivity conditions we use are I think nothing but the enforcement of this unitarity of the matter. So I would say the loop equations say something about already the dynamic, the action, but the mm, positivity conditions are about the measure and about the boundary conditions for solving these loop equations. You replace the exact boundary conditions, like backtracking conditions, with the inequality. Can, can I ask you about this? Uh, I mean, your expectations. You mentioned that 10 L equals 24. And, yes. But uh, I maybe you can comment. I, I expect this grows very fast with L, right? The number of variables. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. It's uh, growing extremely fast. Actually, if it's better in four. So is there is there a way of like? Um, Maybe as the uh, other suggesting, using some approximate guess for what large loops are, because they're going to be small. Large loops and loops are going to be small. Yes, and indeed. somehow you do some approximation of large loops, and then you use only variables of small loops, which you don't really know, and you can somehow do some kind of mixture that you can go faster to the infinite. Uh, yeah, that's possible. But uh, by this way, you are not getting rigorous bounds uh, anymore. So it is. Uh, it's fine. I can live yeah. with that if you max the Monte Carlo all the way. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's possible. If uh, no, if we don't have other toys, of course we will try yeah. try this. Way. But this is less clear. Actually, there is someone tried it uh, in the last century. I think they are just uh, assuming all the higher views and loops. They are just zero, and uh, they try to do something. Sometimes it uh, get uh, reasonable results. Sorry, you, you, who tried it? Sorry. Sorry? You said someone tried it in... Uh, yes, in the last century, someone just uh, just uh, said all the higher Wilson loops, uh, they are zero. 
and uh, sometimes they get uh, reasonable results for the black average. Reasonable, I mean, uh, like uh, on the same order of magnitude. Yeah, uh, so, the question, so, so just to be sure I understand your variable, so the user, we cap the user limit where the uh, user continuum limit where the coupling is small as a, at the lattice scale is lambda to zero in your plot? Uh, you can go back to the theory, the, the uh, yes. That's the left side of this plot. Yes, you are right. So for the continuous theory, lambda is going to zero if you do the renormalization slow correctly. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Do you have some intuition why the actual value is so close to the upper bound? Uh, there is some intuitive uh, explanation, indeed, yes. So, what uh, um, in the allowed region, we are asking where does the exact result uh, locate, right? We have a rigorous allowed region, where does the exact result locate? Well, it seems uh, it is uh, here the minimizing the action, right? This is the action. We want to maximize the uh, measure. Oh, uh, sorry. We want to maximize the exponential. So we want to minimize the uh, action. So we want to maximize the uh, black hat average. So it is it will locate uh, close to the upper bound. This is a very intuitive argument, but uh, well, this is not precise at all. One comment about the continuous limit about the previous question that uh, the real physics like. Uh, the dream about uh, comes uh, here in this, uh, gra uh, uh, in this graph only from these black points, which the uh, can show. Yes, uh, uh, it's purple actually. Uh, purple now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I see them as black. It's just before the face on this. There is a dense, uh, this dense uh, piece of uh, box because uh, because uh, for the, the continuum limit in principle can be achieved only if you send the coupling lambda to zero. But then you, uh, in Monte Carlo, usually you, uh, you have finite lattices. So you're, uh, uh, you have a finite lattice, but your correlation radius is infinite in your asymptotic freedom. You don't uh, have the right continuous limit. But uh, if you make it too close to phase transition, then it collapses to a very small size, the correlation radius, smaller than the lattice spacing. Mm -hmm. So the compromise is precisely uh, with this purple point. Yeah. This is the place where we have to reach a better agreement if we want to describe real physics. We are still a little bit there is a gap. <laughs> yeah, just to be sure I understood, so in, in lattice there are two limits, right? The large volume limit and the continuum limit. Uh, usually, usually, lattice people, this is in order to reproduce the usually n Yes. Here, you are stuck at lattice n So you don't want to take the continuum limit as far as I understand. You want to keep the lattice size finite. Just to match with some other lattice computation at finite lattice size. Am I, do I understand correctly? The only point is that somehow we are able to do large volume in the sense that we have infinite number of lattice size. Mm -hmm. So in principle, you should match it, if I understand correctly. Not with the continuum young needs, which is good uh, what we would like to do, but it's one step beyond. But you should match with the lattice computation. Yeah, in infinite that's volume. Why we infinite are... volume. Not the continuum limit. I want to say that there are two limits. No, you you, want, limit, the continuum limit, you want the continuum limit, but this is beyond this is not lattice young needs, no. it's actually young. It is a lattice on young wheels, but yeah. we have a different uh, uh, infrared cutout than the Monte Carlo. Uh, Exactly. They have finite lattice, we have finite size of the contours of the Wilson loop to consider, but it's also an infrared cutoff. So our cutoff is like 16, the length of the loop, maybe it's, uh, it corresponds to, in the lattice, is to quite small size, maybe 6 or whatever factor uh, estimate. But we, if we increase the length of the loops, we increase the infrared cutoff and uh, effectively we reach the, con the continuous limit. 
with the sum or some values of our carbon. It's the same <coughs> game as in like the gauge theory, only the ultraviolet infrared cutoff is different. Thank you. Ultraviolet is the same. Thank you. So you have to match all of that. Yeah, we have to increase the length of the loop. This is our chance of the loop. Yeah, no, I mean, a finite uh, UV and IR cutoff, so without taking any limits, you have to match uh, the, your coupling to the last is coupling at the same energy. Uh, the, the, the coupling is the same, but the coupling should be there where these purple points the, That's the window where you really have the continuous limit within your IR and between I, the correlation radius is between IR and uh, UV cutoff. Do you have a similar plot, for example, for uh, bigger plaquettes, like yeah. the 2 by 2 square, and because of them? Uh, yes, I have it, but uh, I didn't prepare it. And it's yeah. still... Uh, it's still... It's, it's going close. up. It's, it's very going. close to the upper bound also, the, your, um, your yes, exact yes, your lines? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, for that plot, I'm not bounding it, but I'm just extracting the mm -hmm. extremal solution for the upper bound to, to plot the higher wave loops. Yeah, they are close uh, to the yeah. to the uh, Monte Carlo. So basically, you can understand that the upper bound is the uh, correct uh, physical solution. Lower bound is nothing. Do we have yeah. any idea of what happens to loop equations if we add a handful matter? Sorry? Do we have any idea of what happens to loop equations if I add in a handful matter? Uh, you mean add some fermion? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, there will be some quantities uh, like uh, will the loops connecting two fermions, something like that. So it will be more involved. Actually, for the uh, Monte Carlo simulation of the fermion, it is uh, hard, even for Monte Carlo. So people use some clinched method that uh, they run the Monte Carlo simulation for the gate field first, then they get the value and then put the lattice, uh, sorry, then put the forming on. They, they have such tricks because uh, simulating all the things at the same time, it seems very hard. But in your limit, uh, these are suppressed because it's yeah. a large end. Uh, yeah, yeah, in large end, this is totally suppressed. No effect. In large end, if we have the whole collection of Wilson loops, we know the, uh, the Maison correlators and the Maison masses. Here we know it. Uh, up to some length of the loop, but still, this is the thing to calculate. You, you have only external fermion which goes along the loop, no dynamical loops inside, and you can sum up with the loop, with overall loops with the, with, with, with the uh, fermion factor. Yes, and in principle, we are not. We, we are going to do something like that. But of course, to include the dynamical fermion for finite n, this will be at least as complicated as for Monte Carlo. Okay, there are no further questions. That's